Dylan Gabriel has committed to transfer to Oregon. Kyle McCord and Julian Fleming might end up going to Nebraska. And we got to get into my way too early 2024 Heisman finalist picks. Let's go. It's the number one college football show. What's up, kinfolk? Welcome to the number one college football show. I am your host, RJ Young. Thank you for watching on the Fox Sports app, YouTube, or listening wherever you get your podcast. Today on the show, we got to talk about transfer portal news, and we got to get into my way too early 2024 picks for who could win the Heisman Trophy. But let's start with that, right? Let's start with just acknowledging the Heisman Trophy was awarded on Saturday to Jaden Daniels to really nobody's surprise. He finished with 503 first place votes. That's more than Michael Penix Jr., who finished with 292, but it was very close. It's the closest that we've seen between two uh, quarterbacks since 2018. I thought both of those guys were deserving. As a matter of fact, I didn't really have a problem with any of the four finalists that were picked there. Seeing Jordan Travis and Jalen Milrow finish just outside the group that was invited to New York. I think that's about right. You know how much I love Jalen Milrow, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit and what he was able to accomplish at Alabama this year. But given what Jaden Daniels was able to do, which is basically create a category unto himself, becoming the first player in FBS history to throw for 350 and rush for 250 in the same game, 3,800 yards through the air, 1,100 yards on the ground. It was kind of interesting to see those statistics come from a guy that I feel like I've been watching play football for four years, five years, excuse me, because I have, right? Now, as we're getting into these way too early 2024 Heisman contenders, let's remind ourselves that, yeah, guys are getting to stick around a little bit longer than they have in the past, and that is going to influence some of our picks. That said, let's go with my top five, starting at number five. I got Georgia quarterback Carson Beck, who leads the Georgia Bulldogs, And it's certainly going to have even more to prove in 2024. He was very loud about, hey, I didn't win those national championships that I was a part of those national championship teams, but I didn't win those. Stetson won those. And then to see how this year ended for them in the regular season, or excuse me, in the conference championship, not the regular season, and knowing what they're up against against Florida State and then trying to run it back in 2024, I think he's going to get a little bit more of an opportunity to throw the ball all the way around the yard as he's going to go into year two. And I think Mike Bobo wants to go win that national championship as well. Number four there, let's talk about Ohio State running back Travion Henderson, who could still opt for the NFL draft because nothing is guaranteed until the deadline comes and passes. But I think that Ohio State might be geared even more toward running the football in 2024. As a matter of fact, it could be a team that features Travion Henderson in a way that we've never seen a tailback be featured since Ryan Day has become head coach at Ohio State. He had over 800 yards on the ground, but when he was healthy, he was one of the better home run hitters in the entire sport. And that is the kind of thing that can propel you to winning the Heisman Trophy. Still trying to see if he can get back to that form he showed as a true freshman, rushing for over 1,200 yards with 19 total TDs. He puts together the kind of season that we saw the Dope Walker Award winner this year have, and he's doing it at Ohio State. And honestly, beat Michigan, it's not hard to see how number 32 could end up winning the Heisman Trophy, and that would continue an outstanding run for Ryan Day, who has had a Heisman Trophy finalist six times, basically, since he has become head coach. Talking about Dwayne Haskin, 2018, C.J. Stroud twice, Chase Young, Justin Fields, and recently Marvin Harrison Jr., I think that a worthy candidate would be Travion Henderson. All right, now let's talk about number three, Oklahoma State running back Ali Gordon, who really did enjoy the biggest breakout season of any major college football player in the country this year. He finished with the FPS rushing title. Now, it's not just that he rushed for over 1,600 yards at Oklahoma State. It's that he didn't even get that many carries to start the season. Just 19 touches in the first three games of the season for the Cowboys, and he still manages to run through the Big 12 and put up some really gaudy numbers. Had a couple of games where he rushed for more than 270 yards, had a number of games where he rushed for over 150, and 
became the program's first Doak Walker Award winner, which is kind of interesting in that you thought Barry Sanders would have won that award. Turns out that award was created a couple years after Barry Sanders won the Heisman, to which I'm sure the Doak Walker people would be like, yeah, we would have given Barry Sanders the Heisman trophy, or excuse me, the Doak Walker Award in 1988 had we had the thing around. But he's probably going to feature in a Big 12 that is going to be really thick through the middle, probably deeper next year than it is this year because of the teams that are coming in, the competition they're going to face. And Mike Gundy has never been afraid of running the football. He loves running the football and knowing he's got zero back there. Yeah, all right. He's probably going to try to get on the good foot and get that guy running in the right direction quick, fast and in a hurry. Number two on the list, Alabama quarterback Jalen Milrow. The difference between what we've seen from Jalen Milrow to start the season and what we saw from Jalen Milrow to get some really impressive wins late in the season is dramatic. I don't think anybody enjoyed a better turnaround midseason than that guy. Jalen has all of the skills that Jaden Daniels showed us. It's about being able to take better care of the football and do a little bit more in the intermediate passing game to really help those numbers, but also make Alabama into a more dynamic offense, one that doesn't just depend on him. He, Jason McClellan, and Roy Dell Williams, among others, Jam Miller, to run the football, but also can hit those guys over the middle, whereas you're just looking downfield for guys like Jermaine Burton or even in Isaiah that might be there, might not be there. We'll we'll see, right? You don't want to call a grave digger play every single time you got to go do this, but you understand my point here is if Jalen Milrow can continue to show the sort of progress that he showed in the last half of the season, everything's going to be all right. I really do believe that dude has what it takes to win the Heisman Trophy. I also think that he could probably do the best for his chances to win in 2024 with a win against Michigan in the college football playoff and a national championship on a team that, frankly, was supposed to be rebuilding in 2023. They were not supposed to play in the college football playoff, and yet Here they stand in large part because that dude picked himself up off the dirt after getting benched following the Texas loss and became the kind of quarterback that they really needed to have in Tuscaloosa to achieve what they have, which is knockoff 29 game win Georgia in the SEC title game. And then number one on the list, I got Oregon quarterback Dylan Gabriel, who I say Oregon quarterback. He has committed to transfer to Oregon and he's posted a photo on the Twitters, on the Instagram, saying as much, and he's going to be rocking Marcus Mariota's number eight, which is not a small thing. If you know much about Dylan Gabriel and his background coming out of Hawaii, he is very, very much on the Marcus Mariota program. He really loved that dude, loved watching him play, and it means a lot for him to come from the island to the mainland to put on the way that Tua Tonga Valoa has put on, the way that Frankly, Talia Tonga-Valoa has put on the way his father put on when he played at Hawaii. And certainly Marcus Mariota, Jeremiah Masoli, and the likes. Really great and long heritage of players coming from Hawaii that might be able to do something at places like Oregon. And I think that he is just going to further exacerbate, or I should say, push forward this argument that Oregon should be playing for a college football playoff spot in 2024, if not for the Big Ten Championship. Now, I think it's going to be much easier for Oregon to make the college football playoff in 2024 because there are 12 teams, but it might not be easier for them to try to win a Big Ten championship, but they're close. And Dan Lanning has done such an outstanding job of building this roster and keeping coordinators involved like Will Stein and like Tosh Lapoy to where I expect them to compete. And if Dylan Gabriel can play the kind of football that he's played most of his career – He could be another 4,000 passing guy who's got 60 TDs and easily could take Oregon to new heights, right? Namely, winning a national championship, something they'd never done. He does all of that, put them on that trajectory, we should say. By the time the Heisman voting ends, I could see him winning the Heisman Trophy in 2024. Those, Those are my top five for who could win it. But as all things, these things are subject to change. Just take a look at the transfer portal, which is where I want to go next. Let's talk about some of the news that happened. I mentioned Gabriel was committed to Oregon. That also had some, well, knockout effects. One of those is that Ty Thompson decided that he wanted to enter the transfer portal. This is a four-star prospect who had signed with Oregon not long ago. Still a guy that we wanted to see develop. Never thought that he was going to be the guy that Bo Nix is or even Dylan Gabriel is, but he had the raw skill set 
to perhaps develop into a great power five starter. Now he's going to have to do that elsewhere as he entered his name into the transfer portal. Also, Will Howard decided to take a visit to Miami on Monday. That is going to be significant because Miami is very much in the market for a starting quarterback as Tyler Van Dyke also entered his name into the transfer portal. And on Tuesday, Cam Ward is expected to visit Miami. Those are two of the top quarterbacks left on the board. And I think as soon as those dudes decide what they're going to do, particularly Cam Ward, we're going to see dominoes start to fall all over the country as there are a number of pretty good quarterbacks in the portal that you might want to go get. Some surprises, some not. One of those surprises for me, though, was Kyle McCord at Ohio State. So over the weekend, we learned that Kyle McCord and Julian Fleming are each scheduled to take visit to Nebraska, which is going to be an interesting story to follow. If for no other reason than start with Kyle McCord, it was starting quarterback at Ohio State and took that program to 11 and one as the starter threw for over 3000 yards and got some pretty impressive wins, namely against Penn State and Notre Dame early in the season. Couldn't get past Michigan, but maybe that can change at a place like Nebraska, I think that he immediately elevates their quarterback position into one that not only can go bowling, something they just missed out on this year, even though they had, I think, three opportunities to get to bowl eligibility, couldn't quite get it done, but make them competitive in this new, very competitive Big Ten if you can go get a five-star quarterback, the caliber of Kyle McCord, to come in right away and make you better. Also, let's not let's not sit on this part. Matt Rule is the guy that told us not two weeks ago, hey, just so we're all clear here, it tossed, it cost us $1.5 to $2 million to go get a good quarterback. I'm sure Kyle McCord looked at that and said, oh, I can do it for that much. I, I, I can definitely do it for that much. That said, he also might be joined by a teammate in Julian Fleming. Fleming, who was the number one wide receiver in the class of 2020, but never looked better than the third best option in an Ohio State offense. Now, some of that, I think, is just because the wide receivers at Ohio State, basically since 2019, have been outstanding. I mean, we're talking about Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jackson Smith, and Jigba, and Mecca Ibuka, right? That said, you expect the number one wide receiver in the 2020 class to get more touches and more catches than Fleming had. Now, he had 79 catches for 963 yards and seven TDs, but that's over the course of four years in Columbus and not one season. The numbers that I just gave you are the kind you would like to see in a season, not over the course of a career at a place like Ohio State, especially given that they wanted to throw the ball all over the yard. Now, that said, Kyle McCord, Julian Fleming show up that might be your number one quarterback and your number one wide receiver. And I think those guys have thrown together or thrown to each other. I should say Kyle McCord threw to Julian Fleming in practice. So they're familiar with each other, but one is not necessarily dependent on the other. I'm sure Nebraska won't say no if they wanted to consider themselves a package deal, but I just don't see it there. I think both of those guys are going to do what's best for each one of them. Certainly a story I'm very interested in because those are two five-star players who are two of the best players in their class at their position that can make Nebraska into something other than a nice story, but something to be feared. And I'm sure Nebraska would love to get back to being feared. All right, let's go from that transfer portal news to some coaching news that I found to be rather exciting. That's a little bit inside baseball, but I'm going to explain why. Lincoln Riley succeeded in hiring North Dakota State head coach Matt Entz to coach linebackers at USC. That's phenomenal. Like, I was blown away by this how by this hire, and kudos to Logan Campbell, who beat a number of really great newsbreakers to get this really great news reported before anybody else. The thing about Matt Ince that I think you should know right off the top is he's won two national championships since 2019 as the head coach at North Dakota State. He's the guy that took over after Chris Kleiman took the job down at Kansas State, and he's been a two-time head coach of the year in the FCS 2019-2021. He's coached 20 All-Americans since 2019. That's not including this 2023 year, for which I'm sure that number is going to go up. But some of the guys that he has coached include Trey Lance and Jabril Cox. Jabril Cox, who showed up at LSU to be pretty outstanding. Trey Lance, who was a top five pick in the NFL draft and might be the heir apparent to Dak Prescott 
and then my Dallas Cowboys, but not for nothing, but I don't get too far on this. Dallas Cowboys look mean. We look mean. We look mean. Okay. Outside of that, what's his winning record been like? It's been 60 and 10. Like that's that's phenomenal. That dude has won 60 games. He's lost just 10 as a head coach at NDSU. And at one point, they won 39 in a row at North Dakota State. And I find this fact pretty fun. They went 16 and 0. And going 16 and 0, they became the first program to go 16 and 0 since Yale in 1894. And they did it with a national championship win, 28 to 20, against James Madison. Yeah, that James Madison. James Madison that was also flirting with a perfect regular season just this year, going 11 and 1. And their head coach is now over at Indiana. I really love this hire. Because it signals to the USC fan base that, no, you are taking them seriously. When Lincoln Riley says the defense is going to get better, at this point it's become, okay, that's what head coaches say. What head coach does not want his defense or his offense to get better? But who are the guys you're asking to coach it? Now, Danton Lynn was one thing, and that dude is a rising star in the field. I think Riley is right about that, and he's going to be a head coach before you know it. But to get a guy like Matt Entz, who has this pedigree, And that background, to pick up from Fargo and move to L.A. to coach a position for you, that says everything to me. Because that means that Entz has a tremendous amount of respect for Riley and Lynn. And they're probably going to ask him to contribute as much as he is willing to as a linebacker coach to their culture, which needs to change on the defense. They have to get better. It's also worth saying that he took this job. While still coaching in North Dakota State. So this Saturday, North Dakota State is going to play Montana in an FCS semifinal. So he could show up to SC with yet another national championship under his belt. And my favorite fact about Matt Entz in all of this is that he got his start as a strength and conditioning coach at Wayne State. As a man who worshipped at the altar of the National Strength and Conditioning Association, getting your CSE cert. Getting your your cert to be a CSCS, excuse me, Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist. That's awesome. Like I, That fired me up because, number one, I got a coach that understands how hard you have to work in the weight room and doesn't just hand that one off to a strength and conditioning coordinator. So you're probably going to be pretty good there. But I also got a coach that is about the work. He is not just sitting there chewing film. He's also, hey, how stronger are you getting? What is your injury prevention like? What is your nutrition right? And a lot of things just came into focus for me about Matt Entz and about the bison by just knowing that because my background is very much as an English professor, but also exercise and exercise sports science at the University of Tulsa, where I wanted to do exactly that job. And I thought that was going to be my calling was to make things bigger, faster, stronger, to really get them yoked up and make them ready to go do what they got to do. I love knowing that about Matt Entz, and I love that you're bringing that physical demand, that physical culture to that USC defense because, A, you need it, and, B, you got to play in the Big Ten next year. And I don't know if anybody has told them yet, but teams like Iowa, teams like Michigan, teams like Ohio State, teams like Penn State, they are about their defense, and they will come after you. And you're going to get to see some familiar faces because it's not just USC, UCLA. It's also Washington, Oregon, and Jonathan Smith becoming new head coach at Michigan State, like that conference has gotten to be so thick in a hurry that you're going to need somebody like a Matt Entz to help you navigate it and a Matt Entz who is used to recruiting in the Midwest, which is a place that USC is going to have to go in and try to win now that they're going to be playing so many games in that part of the country. Again, phenomenal hire. I could not be higher on a position coach hiring than I am about Matt Entz at USC. One other thing to to cite on all of this is I'm sure we're going to get to see more happening in as far as the transfer portal and head coaching. Remember, this show is up on Tuesday. We'll have another show for you on Thursday. And as this news happens, we will continue to keep up with it. But know that I am paying attention and we will talk about it. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the number one college football show. Our number one college football show leads of screening are Jack Coakley and Torn Westfall. They make us better in the film room. Production assistant Kiara Santana puts a special in our special teams. We got social producer Joe on Duncan making sure the recruits and the rivals see the cake we bake. Chris Cheshire is sending in the signals. Senior producer Catherine Cordaggi sees the entire field from the booth. 
Lead producer Tyler Wojak calls the plays from the sideline and the play snaps on my clap. We will see y'all on Thursday. Shout out to what's right electric who got your boy online. All right. That's it for me. Doses.